much. We will move on to our second excellent speaker, uh, Leah Tari. So Leah is a research assistant professor at the Northwestern University. She received her PhD degree in Toronto, Canada. And Leah had the initial interest actually in how memory form pillow work. But she was not satisfied that study enough. So she wanted to know more about the memory work. So joined the uh, Baba Vasa's lab at the Northwestern for her postdoctoral training. She is also interested uh, in elucidating mechanisms that, that related to dysfunctional lysosome in neurodegenerative disease. Uh, she worked with Joe Mozilla at the Northwestern as well. Today, she's going to discuss how genetic variant of angiotensin 1 converting enzyme increase the risk of AD. Welcome you, Leah. Leah, you are unmuted. Okay, great. I can see that Leah is having issues sharing her screen. Maybe Jerry can help. Um, yes, uh, you should be able to share your screen. Could you try it again? Okay. Okay, yeah, I see the screen now. Okay, so then you can hear me? Yes. Okay, great. great. So thank you, um, Ray Cheng, for the introduction and to the organizers of the Open Box Science um, Seminar Series. I am uh, excited to be here to talk about the role of angiotensin converting enzyme in Alzheimer's disease. And I also wanted to say that was a great talk to Celine. I come from a very base focused lab and we've actually um, gone over uh, your paper in our journal club, and we all were really impressed. So it was great to hear it firsthand. Um, so I'll give just an outline of my talk today. I'm going to talk about ACE and its previous links to Alzheimer's. And then I'll talk about our recent publication on a new ACE mutation, R1279Q, and how it's involved in neurodegeneration. And then I'll talk about some of the future directions of our work and the therapeutic implications it has uh, for Alzheimer's disease. So uh, we published uh, the paper on the ACE mutation last fall in Science Translational Medicine. And I was working on this project uh, as a postdoc with my PI, Bob Vassar, um, at Northwestern University. But it was really a collaborative project with Rudy Tanzi and Dmitry Prokopenko, who identified the mutation in the ACE gene. So they um, identified the mutation through the whole genome sequencing project. And this was a study um, where they did whole genome sequencing of a number of different cohorts of Alzheimer's patients. And they identified a rare coding mutations um, in the ACE gene. And so they identified several different mutations and they selected the ACE R1279Q mutant uh, because it was highly penetrant and found in a number of families. So after uh, they selected this mutation for analysis, they generated knock-in mice with CRISPR and Cas9 genome editing. And these knock-in mice expressed the mutation in the mouse genome, which is ACE R1284Q. And that's when um, we got involved at Northwestern and we worked on characterizing the knock-in mouse model to determine how the ACE mutation can influence the risk of Alzheimer's in humans. So Alzheimer's is a progressive neurodegenerative disorder and it's characterized by a significant brain atrophy which is caused by neurodegeneration and the buildup of amyloid plaques and neurofibrillary tangles. And it's also um, characterized by neuroinflammation and gliosis or the activation of microglia and astrocytes. And so we think that um, our work on ACE 
can provide insight into um, three of the unsolved mysteries of Alzheimer's, which are that age is the primary risk factor and there's selective neuronal vulnerability observed. And so this occurs in brain areas that are um, involved in the clinical symptoms of Alzheimer's, such as the hippocampus, whereas brain areas such as the cerebellum are resistant. And then finally, um, women have a higher risk of developing Alzheimer's than men do. So ACE uh, is most well known for its involvement in the blood pressure pathway. So it cleaves angiotensin one to angiotensin two, and that's a vasoconstrictor that elevates blood pressure. But ACE has um, a number of substrates, and importantly in Alzheimer's, it can cleave a beta 42. So it's expressed in all tissues, and that includes the brain where it's expressed in neurons. And some of our work, which I'll show later on, um, has shown that the levels of ACE vary dependent on the neuronal subtypes it's expressed in. So it's expressed highly in cerebellar neurons, whereas it's expressed at low levels in the hippocampus. So when we look at um, the structure of ACE, it's a very large enzyme. It has two extracellular catalytic domains, and it's anchored to the cell surface through a transmembrane domain and a short cytoplasmic tail. So ACE can uh, retain catalytic activity in this tissue bound form, but it can also be cleaved and released from the surface where it's active um, in the extracellular space. So the mutation uh, that we're studying is localized in the cytoplasmic tail of the enzyme just outside the transmembrane domain. So to regulate uh, blood pressure, ACE acts through the renin angiotensin system and so um, this is a complex pathway, but the uh, main steps are the cleavage of angiotensin by renin into angiotensin one, which gets cleaved by ACE into angiotensin two. And then angiotensin two goes on to bind to AT1 receptors, which are um, present in a number of organs. And ultimately um, this causes an elevation of blood pressure. So um, it's important to note um, from my study that the brain expresses an intrinsic RAS pathway, meaning that all these components are expressed and produced in the brain and don't cross the blood brain barrier. So uh, previous studies have hinted at a connection between Alzheimer's and ACE. And so the main observation has been that midlife hypertension is associated with increased risk of Alzheimer's. And um, related to this, epidemiological studies have shown that ACE inhibitors and angiotensin receptor blockers, and these are widely prescribed drugs that inhibit steps of the RAS pathway, they reduce um, Alzheimer's risk. So then we also um, have observed in our study and in other studies that elevated levels of ACE are present in postmortem Alzheimer's brains and that ACE is an A-beta-degrading enzyme. And this has really only been shown convincingly in in vitro studies. Um, in vivo studies have had mixed results, and that could be because of um, differences in the ability of ACE inhibitors to cross the blood-brain barrier. But it also could be due to the fact that um, ACE is really not expressed at high levels in areas of the brain that develop plaques, such as the hippocampus or the cortex. So, and then finally, um, there have been a number of studies by uh, Kenneth Bernstein's group that have shown that ACE is involved in the peripheral adaptive immune response. And so given the uh, recent data connecting the innate immune response with Alzheimer's, um, this is an interesting a hypothesis that we're looking to follow up on in the lab now. So um, after Rudy and his team identified the rare variants in ACE, there were several studies that came out that validated ACE as a risk gene. And so these were um, in GWAS studies, as well as a recent uh, proteome-wide association study, which integrated uh, proteome data with the GWAS data and this found that ACE is um, very significant, and that suggests that variation or variance in the ACE locus can affect 
ACE protein levels and thereby um, confer the risk of Alzheimer's disease. So um, together, there's a lot of strong evidence that's linking ACE with Alzheimer's, but um, the pathogenic mechanism has been unclear. And this is uh, probably because ACE has so many substrates and seems to function in a number of pathways. So uh, we first sought to investigate two of the major hypotheses of ACE and Alzheimer's, which is whether it affects blood pressure and whether ACE can be a significant A beta 42 degrading enzyme. Um, it didn't turn out to be either of these, but um, these were our initial um, questions. And so we hoped that by understanding the mechanism of the mutation, that would reveal insight into the role of ACE in sporadic Alzheimer's, um, similar to how identifying mutations in APP and the presenolins have been central to forming um, the amyloid hypothesis and TREM2 um, recently has formed the uh, hypothesis of the innate immune system in Alzheimer's. So um, we first looked at whether the mutation could affect ACE1 function because oftentimes uh, mutations lead to uh, improper folding and ER stress and loss of function of proteins. So we wanted to look at whether uh, mutant ACE was still functional. So we did this uh, in primary four brain neurons that were um, collected from wild type or knock in mice. And then we analyzed um, the cell surface levels of ACE through a biotinylation assay. And we found that um, there are significantly increased ACE at the cell surface. And this um, corresponded to an increased ACE in the lysate of these cells. But when we looked at the conditioned media, there was significantly reduced ACE present in the media. So this suggested to us that um, mutant ACE was able to traffic normally to the cell surface. However, the shedding seemed to be impaired. And so um, the mutation is a substitution of a positively charged um, arginine amino acid for a neutral glutamine. And so this could potentially affect the anchoring or the orientation of the transmembrane domain um, in the plasma membrane. And so we hypothesized that could lead to reduced cleavage uh, by the atom family shedes. So the other thing uh, that we noticed when doing these studies was that um, there was significant cell death occurring in our uh, primary forebrain neurons. So we didn't expect to see this, but we wanted to um, follow up on it because neurodegeneration is obviously a major feature of Alzheimer's. So uh, we quantified it using a tunnel stain, which binds to apoptotic cells. And we found that uh, there's a significant increase in dead cells at both uh, seven days and 14 days in culture in our knock-in neurons. We also observed um, neuritic beating, which further supports um, the idea that these cells are um, sick and dying as a result of expressing the knock-in mutation. So we looked further into the cell death pathway um, by Western blot analysis. So we looked at levels of cleave caspase and we see that um, there's much more activation in the knock-in mice. And there's an increase in uh, phospho H2AX, which is a marker of DNA damage. So this is just quantified and significant. So um, that was exciting for us because we really didn't expect to see increased cell death, but it led us to sort of a new idea of how ACE could be affecting Alzheimer's pathology. Um, but we wanted to uh, first investigate some of the well-known functions of ACE, such as its role in blood pressure. So we did this um, by measuring blood pressure in our knock-in mice at eight and 14 months of age. And we found that um, at either age point, there was no difference in blood pressure. And then we also looked at cerebrovascular function. And we did this um, through an MRI imaging study and we measured cerebral blood flow and blood brain barrier permeability. And again, we saw no effect of the knock-in mutation on either cerebral vascular function or blood pressure. So uh, we concluded then from this that any phenotypes that we were to observe 
um, in the mice would be from a central and not a peripheral action of the mutation. So then uh, we went uh, look to look at ACE levels in vivo. And so we first wanted to look at the localization of ACE in the mouse brain. And um, so we did this through IF staining. And so here you can see ACE is stained in green and it's really most highly expressed in the cerebellum and in the brainstem. And there is ACE expression in uh, primary or in cortical neurons as well as in hippocampal neurons. Uh, but it's at much lower levels. And so we also looked at this uh, by Western and you can see that um, in the cerebellum, ACE levels are highest. And then what we also did was to look at whether the other components of the RAS pathway are produced or expressed in the brain. And we found that um, all of the components are expressed, but we saw that um, they're expressed at different levels depending on the brain region. So kind of in contrast to ACE, we found that the angiotensin II receptor and renin are highest in the cortex or the hippocampus, which are brain areas that are you know, more vulnerable in Alzheimer's, and it's lowest in the cerebellum where ACE is highest. So then um, we wanted to look at different cell type expression of ACE. So um, Kenneth Bernstein's group had shown a lot of work that suggested that ACE is involved in the immune response so we wanted to see if we could um, see if ACE was expressed in the innate immune cells of the brain. So we looked at uh, microglia with IBA1 staining and GFAP, uh, which marks astrocytes. And we saw that ACE mainly co-localizes uh, to neurons. And so this um, supported a previous study showing that ACE is mainly a neuronal uh, protein. So then we looked at ACE levels and angiotensin signaling in the brains of the knock-in mice. I had previously shown that we saw in culture that ACE levels were elevated and we were able to replicate this in vivo. And we found that at three months and at 12 months, there's a significant increase in ACE expression with the knock-in mutation, which is shown here in red. But what we also noticed was that with aging alone, we see a significant increase in ACE. And this occurred in both the knock-in and uh, wild type mice. And then um, as we would expect, we also found an increase in angiotensin II level in the brain. And then we looked at the downstream um, signaling of angiotensin II uh, by looking at phosphorylated ERK levels. And we found significantly elevated phospho ERK um, in the knock-in mouse brain. So this just confirms that the mutation increased uh, ACE1 levels and angiotensin II levels. But what we also found was that aging actually increased ACE levels further. So then we looked at whether the knock-in mice have any signs of neurodegeneration because we saw um, such significant apoptosis in primary culture. And so we looked at this um, in eight months and 14 months old animals. And we found that um, in the 14 month old animals, there's a significant atrophy of the hippocampus. And in some mice, we saw really exaggerated uh, lateral ventricle volume. And so we quantified this and we found that not only are homozygous uh, knock-in animals affected, but we also saw this in our heterozygotes, suggesting that the mutation um, occurs, causes hippocampal atrophy in a gene dose dependent autosomal dominant fashion. And so we also saw a reduced dentate gyrus volume and a lateral ventricle volume increase. And we didn't see these uh, changes at eight months, suggesting that it's a neurodegenerative phenotype and not due to um, developmental changes due to the knock-in mutation. And so the other thing um, that I wanna point out on this slide is that we really only noticed the atrophy in the hippocampus whereas other brain areas, uh, such as the cerebellum, which I'm not showing today, but it was unaffected, and the midbrain was really unaffected as well. So that suggested to us that the mutation could be selectively affecting hippocampal um, neurodegeneration. So we quantified this further uh, using new end staining, and we found that in the CA1 to CA3 regions, of the hippocampus, there's a significant loss of new end staining 
And we also found uh, evidence of pycnotic nuclei, which suggests that they're undergoing apoptosis. So uh, when we quantified this in the cerebellum and the cortex, we didn't see any significant changes. But when we looked at the hippocampus, it was uh, significantly reduced. So again, suggesting that uh, somehow the mutation is selectively affecting the hippocampus, whereas other brain areas were more resistant to the knock-in induced neurodegeneration. So then we looked at um, presynaptic markers and neuroinflammation by Western blotting for um, GFAP and IBA1, which mark astrocytes and microglia. And we saw significant elevations in the knock-in mice. And no notably, they mainly occurred in our female knock-in mice. And when we looked at synaptophysin, which is a presynaptic marker, this was significantly reduced. And that also occurred mostly only in the female mice. So um, given that there was these synaptic disruptions and brain atrophy, we then um, naturally wanted to look at whether cognitive function is affected in our knock-in animals. And so we did this using uh, Morse water maze behavioral testing as well as fear conditioning. And we found that our knock-in mice um, were significantly delayed in their learning or their time to the platform. And then they were also um, unable to uh, find the uh, target quadrant, which we measured by platform crossings and quadrant time, suggesting that they have impaired hippocampal dependent memory. And then this was also shown through uh, fear conditioning assays, both in cued and contextual fear conditioning. So um, to determine then uh, whether the substrate of ACE that is meeting neuro neurodegeneration was in fact angiotensin II. We treated our knock-in mice with um, captopril, which is an ACE inhibitor, as well as losartan, which will block the binding of angiotensin II to the AT1 receptor. We treated the mice uh, for six months, and then we measured uh, hippocampal volume and nuen staining. And what we found is that there was a significantly reduced hippocampal volume and um, nuen in our knock-in animals in the vehicle treated groups. But this was um, prevented in the mice that were treated with either Captopro or Losartan. And so uh, we also measured the, me the levels of these drugs in the brain and we found that they do cross the blood-brain barrier. So that would really uh, point to angiotensin II as a substrate mediating cell death in our knock-in mice. So we next crossed the mice to the 5XFAD amyloid mouse model to determine whether the mutation in ACE could influence amyloid levels. But we first uh, wanted to look at hippocampus volume, given the uh, data that we previously showed in our knock-in mice alone. And we found that hippocampus volume was significantly reduced, as well as dentate gyrus volume. And this was um, interesting because it occurred at six months of age Whereas in our knock-in animals alone, we didn't see neurodegeneration until the mice were almost 14 months old. So that um, suggested to us that the A-beta is really accelerating the neurodegeneration caused by the knock-in mutation. So we also looked at neuroinflammation in these mice and we found that there's increase in IBA1 and GFAP. Um, and we measured A-beta 42 levels, and there was no significant change in A-beta, suggesting that the mutation wasn't affecting ACE, A-beta degrading enzyme activity, and is probably increasing Alzheimer's risk through um, its effects on apoptosis. So we then finally moved into human brain tissue, and we wanted to look at ACE levels and the RAS pathway um, to determine if they're disrupted in Alzheimer's disease. And so here we find that in Alzheimer's disease, uh, postmortem tissue, there's a significant increase in ACE and a, a loss of AT1 receptor expression. And um, there's a correlation between ACE and AT1 receptor levels in control brains that is lost in Alzheimer's brains, suggesting that the RAS pathway is dysregulated in Alzheimer's. And then we looked in the hippocampus of Alzheimer's patients, and we found that ACE-expressing neurons seem to be lost from the CA2 region. 
So um, in summary, we think that our work can provide insight into uh, the mechanism of aging in Alzheimer's since we saw ACE levels go up with age. We think that the RAS pathway could be playing a role in selective neuronal vulnerability and resistance. And then we think that it could also be um, giving clues to why females are more susceptible in Alzheimer's. And so uh, this is just our working hypothesis that increased ACE levels increase angiotensin II production, which is known to cause apoptosis. And uh, we're not sure the exact mechanism, but we think it occurs you know, through either non-autonomous or autonomous cell death. And um, yeah, so I think, oh, and I'll just go over some future directions. So we want to further understand the mechanism of the mutation. And I mentioned earlier that there were other ACE variants identified through whole genome sequencing that we'd like to uh, further investigate. And then we're looking at now understanding the function of ACE in the brain using uh, conditional knockout mice that have ACE knocked out in four brain neurons. And they're also investigating whether ACE inhibitors and ARBs could be useful for the treatment of sporadic Alzheimer's and so with that, um, I'll thank the members of my lab and uh, the people who are really involved in the ACE study, um, Eric, Peter, and Ross, as well as our collaborators, um, Dr. Tanzi and Dimitri Prokopenko, and then the Cure Alzheimer's Fund uh, for supporting the project. So um, I'll take any questions. Thank you, Leah. And now we're open for question and answer. We have one in the... So I see a question uh, that says, do we have an explanation for why the female knock-in mice show a more severe phenotype? And um, so we saw in our female mice that they showed increased GFAP and IBA1, as well as a greater loss of synaptic, uh, the presynaptic marker synaptophysin. So we think that can explain why we saw uh, greater cognitive effects in our behavior testing. But as to why they had this more severe phenotype, um, we haven't tested this directly in the lab, but estrogen is known to um, inhibit the renin angiotensin system. So it's possible that um, when female mice or humans undergo a menopausal transition or loss of estrogen levels, this can lead to further activation of the RAS pathway and intense um, two production and then cause cell death. Uh, Leah, uh, have you looked at the uh, uh, hippocampal skeletal sample, see whether ACE1 somehow the level change as well or not? Because your pathology look like uh, uh, so restricted to hippocampus. So the question was, have we looked at the hippocampus levels in human patients? Yeah, hippocampal sclerosis uh, uh, patient. Um, so we haven't looked at that yet. So that's something that um, we're interested in doing. But no, we haven't looked at it yet, but it definitely seems like there's an effect of um, ACE specifically in the hippocampus. Um, we've looked at the receptor levels, which are highest in the hippocampus. So we think that it's actually the angiotensin receptor that's mediating uh, the selective neuronal vulnerability that we see. Okay, another question I want to ask, uh, I mean, when you close uh, the knocking mice with the 5X uh, um, transgenic mice, do you see uh, neuronal loss more in the cortical region? So we did see that. We didn't quantify the change, but we did observe that in the region surrounding the plaques. Um, I can just, maybe I can go back to that. Um, we saw a loss of new end staining surrounding plaques, but um, that's something that um, if we want to say it confidently, we, we need to quantify that in the future. So. Okay, thank you. So we have uh, more in the chat box. 
so the question in the chat box is um, whether neurodegeneration in the hippocampus of acenokin mice is more selective to CA2 neurons or pyramidal neurons in general. We definitely saw um, the change in the CA2, the very small region of CA2 uh, most significantly, but we think that it's likely, um, it would likely be the case in all the pyramidal neurons, um, mainly because we had done some staining for the angiotensin receptor. And I don't have it here today, but it shows that the receptor is uniformly expressed throughout a CA1 um, through CA3 in the hippocampus. So, but we did see um, in our staining that it looked like CA2 could be more vulnerable. Um, so I see another question. Uh, did we look at whether ACE inhibitors change A beta levels in deposition and rescue the caspase 3 pathology? So we we only treated our knock-in mice alone with the ACE inhibitors, so we didn't treat any 5X FAD mice, um, but we're actually doing a study now in the lab where we're treating mice with ACE inhibitors. Um, and so these aren't knock-in mice, but in the future we'd like to treat knock-in uh, crossed with the 5X FAD and look at A beta levels in deposition. Um, and then we could also look at cell death through the caspase pathway. Um, the reason that we're actually doing this study is because we know that ACE is so highly expressed in the cerebellum, yet it's a brain area that doesn't um, develop any plaques. So we're curious as to whether ACE degrades A beta in the cerebellum. And so um, by inhibiting ACE, we're wondering if we can induce plaque expression. So we're excited about that experiment. Um, 